All right, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to another episode of The Main Focus. Today, I have a special guest, Ruben Luna. I call him a master lister, a master Woo-hoo. realtor, and uh, I'm excited to have him. Uh, I was just having a brief conversation with him, and I think this is going to be a breakthrough session for all of you, whether you've been in the game 10, 15 years, or just getting started out. These methods, these strategies, the mindset behind it, I think it's going to propel your perspective to another level, which will allow you to deliver at a higher level for your clients. And with that being said, Ruben, I want to thank you for coming on board and taking time of your busy schedule, right, uh, to come in and, and do this. So thank you very yeah, much. Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. All right. So who likes listings? You do? We, 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 all, we all like listings, right? But why don't we get in some more? Why don't we get stuck with maybe one or two on a daily, on a weekly, monthly basis? Um, a lot of times, or most of the times, it has to do with our message that we're putting out. We, j- we were just talking, and uh, and I see you guys promoting a whole lot, a whole lot of buyers, but nobody's promoting to get listings. And and, and the difference between a buyer and a seller, uh, the message that you're putting out is just a, a, a little s- a switch that you gotta change. You know, congratulations to my buyers, congratulations to my sellers, and 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 uh, and. For those that might not have a, a listing that sold or, or a seller that you're representing, maybe you can utilize one of our company's listings. You know, start promoting um, yourself as a listing agent. You promote yourself as a listing agent, you'll get listings sooner or later. It might take a little more effort, um, but you're gonna get people saying, hey, I do wanna sell my house. Just like the same way that you get people saying, hey, I wanna buy a house, right? So you utilize the change the message to sellers, then you'll start getting listings. And not necessarily just through social media. I mean, there's multiple sources that you can target um, sellers. And that's so true. Uh, I, I love that you said that because your messaging is where you're putting your, your energy towards. Mm-hmm. So y- the vast majority of new agents, it's buyers, buyers, buyers. Do you wanna buy, do you wanna buy? Down payment assistant, do you wanna buy? And you know we get frustrated with the fact that we don't get any sellers and if we change that perspective, you mm-hmm. mentioned something very interesting. Uh, or, or, well, it's common knowledge, but it's it's something that I think we need to reinforce. Is like with listings comes buyers. Yeah. So we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you get listings, you're gonna get buyers. Um, but here's here's the here's the question that uh, that you have to ask yourself. And and you know, I mean, you can do cold calling, you can uh, go after expires, you can do all of that. I don't do none of that, to be honest. I like to target individuals that I know I can help, okay? So my, 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 the way I think on a, on a daily basis is about targeting the right people. I target those individuals that I know that sooner or later they need to make a move. And who better than me to help them to make the move, right? Because somebody else is gonna do it, so might as well be me. So I start, I start uh, brainstorming. First I go based on my database. Like, who do I have that, it doesn't have to be somebody that bought a house from me. It can be a friend, it can be a family, it can be a past co-worker where you used to work that you know for, you know for a fact that they live on a crappy neighborhood, or they live on a, on a small house, or they live, or, you know, you never know unless you ask. Mm-hmm. And if you ask, you start planting the seed. You might not get the listing right away, but you're planting the seed over and over where people are gonna start raising their hands sooner or later over, over time, over the, over the work that you've done. Um, so th- that's my main focus, is targeting people that I can say, hey, if, I, if you list your house, this is how much equity you have. Um, this is how much you can reinvest in your new house uh, or an investment property or you name it. You know, I just start you know, creating those thoughts um, and, 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 and the process might take a little follow-up, but sooner or later, people are gonna start raising their hands to list their house. Um, I, I wanna pause here for a second. So um, I, I love that. So he's not talking about just generalities, right? We, we put a lot of stuff on social media because it's very general. Uh, when it comes to prospecting, it's because uh, usually we prospect with individuals, we've made some sort of contact in the past. Look, so we have, um, you know, w- w- social media, it's more like just general marketing. When we go specifically to the people that you know, like, and trust, or people that you've crossed paths with, now it's like very specific targeting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, 
you know, when you start just thinking about these names, it's just, again, planting the seed. Hey, have you thought about, you know, you lived in your house for 10 years. Check this house out. This is what your house is worth. Like, this is going to take specific time, right? It, it, it takes investment in time to go that specific. Yeah, it's going to take time. It's going to take a lot, you know, a lot of digging and homework and reviewing because at that point you're going to present a picture to somebody else that I'm not even thinking about selling. They don't even, it, that hasn't even crossed their mind about selling their home. Um, and it's gonna, that's, that's where you come in. You're gonna say, this is, these are your options. This is the, the possibilities that you have. And, and it's something we have to think about because um, you're presenting opportunities. You're giving them value. You're, mm -hmm. you're having them see a different perspective for themselves, for their family. Mm -hmm. And it's just uh, kind of painting that picture for them. Hey, you could be here. Yeah. And so they're, they're, they're in this area, you're painting this possibility, and then you bring it together by saying, I'm the bridge. I can bridge the gap between where you're at and where you want to go. Exactly. And that is like the, the dance of, you know, persuasion mm -hmm. of influence. So presenting these opportunities on a consistent basis mm -hmm. has been very effective for you. And, and, and a lot of, most of the times people have already thought about that, but we are the biggest procrastinators. We procrastinate over every single little thing. Don't you think that the mass majority of people procrastinate over selling their house and moving to another house? Yeah. Yes, unless somebody comes in and says, hey, I'm, I'll, I'll make the process very simple. It's not easy, it's simple. Um, to a point where I can get you from this point to this point. Guess what, now you get a listing and you get a buyer right at once. And that's how I get so many deals, um, you know, I, you know on, the, on, the, on the selling side and the buying side. Just because I'm putting that message over and over and over again where people are saying, Hey, Ruben, I was referred to you by such and such. You helped them sell and buy. We want to do the same thing. So, boom. Then I, there, there goes another you know, contingency sale, uh, purchase and, and another listing. So that's, that's with, um, with marketing, right? That's with uh, targeting, I'm sorry. That's with targeting. So now, when you, when you go to a listing presentation, when you go and meet someone, obviously that's how I target people to get listings. Right, I don't go to the mass majority and start promoting on, on 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 social media. I just go directly to the people that I, I think I can help. And you probably all know somebody that it's owns a house that you can probably move into a much better house. Everybody Only, does, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. just start thinking like who who's the one individual that you can call today and set up that appointment. And I, they might not list it today but they might list it tomorrow. I would do that all the time with my own family. Like they all <laughs> like horse property. So I would just kind of say, hey, check out this horse property. That's how we got what well, I had to, well, to move forward. We'll get to that in a minute too. <laughs> There's a lot of things that you guys can do. But these I are mean, all the people that... Sometimes I feel like you know, I would like to clone myself like five times and it'll be, I just, my brain just goes, I, you know, it goes so fast that I can, you know, I even, I exhaust my entire team just of all the stuff that I, you know, I'm consistently um, coming up with. Mm -hmm. But anyways, so the number, the number one factor about, you know, getting listings is the motivation, like why people want to move or why, um, how you can help them move. Why, what's the main reason? You know, when somebody calls you and says, hey, I want to list my house, um, you want to know why. Okay, you want to ask, what's the reason? Um, because once you know the motivation, that's gonna be your driving uh, point to be able to get the home listed. I mean, you're gonna go to a listing presentation that you're gonna get on a, in a heartbeat because you already know the motivation. They're moving out of state, they need a bigger house, they need a smaller house, they need a pool, they want a pool, uh, no pool. Uh, so knowing the motivation, that's what's gonna help you um, get them moving a little bit faster and stick to the plan. That's gonna be your, your plan because how often do we get a listing and it doesn't move within the first couple of weeks and the seller is already having second thoughts. Mm -hmm. Okay, you gotta bring it back to reality. Hey, this is the reason that we're listing your house. This is the reason that you need to move. Um, you know, two story or you name it. There's a tons of uh, uh, reasons why people uh, sell their houses. So your first question before even going to their home is why? why? <laughs> like, why are you moving? Yeah. You know, somebody says, hey Ruben, I wanna um, list my house. Perfect, but what would you like to, wh why are you moving? What's the reason? So when they start telling me, you know, start breaking ice, you know, you break ice with people real fast by asking questions. Um, you're getting to know them. You start building uh, report, right? Yeah. So you start building that report. So when you go to the listing appointment, it, the thing, things go a lot more easier than 
than just trying to sell yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that motivation also will keep the deals together because not all deals go smoothly. Yeah. And sometimes it goes sideways, but reminding them constantly of why they're doing this, why they're facing this pain, why they're facing these obstacles and taking them back to the core reason mm -hmm. uh, will keep the deals in line. Uh, if you cannot bring them back or, or, or uh, shake them away from where their mindset's at, because sometimes they, they, they just want to quit. They just want to stop. If you cannot break that cycle, that deal will fall through. And that happens with a lot of inexperienced agents that can't bring them back to the reason why they even started to begin with. So start taking notes every time you meet, meet a seller, like why are they moving and you know, just so you don't forget. Because if you come across those scenarios where you're having issues with inspection or price or whatever and the seller is not budging, your seller is not budging, then go back to your notes because if you don't remember what's the reason of the moving, <laughs> then it's gonna be tough for you to be able to um, uh, keep it moving. But if you, if you bring it back to reality and say, hey, this is the reason wh why we started this. And sometimes I have to go meet with them face to face and go over the whole process again to kind of, you know, give them a peace of mind and be able to move forward. Um, but definitely motivation is the number, number one factor about securing a listing. Um, now, here's, here's, here's the one thing before I go to a listing presentation, before I go and meet with, uh, with the seller, I like to put myself on their shoes, right? Like always put yourself on other people's shoes. If I have a random individual coming to my house, why am I expecting from them? Like what, what you know, if I have Omar coming to my house, I, I want to hire him as a realtor. Why am I expecting from him? So that's the same um, mental process that I go through before I even approach. Um, and the first thing, be, even before I, you know, sit down and, and, and so on and so forth, and, 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 probably, and probably most of you do the same thing, I ask them to show me the house, and at the same time that they're showing me their house, I'm creating a conversation. I'm building more report. Because the more report you build with them, the easier it's gonna get once you see, you get to the to the uh, the listing agreement to you know just to to get a sign. So before I sit, as a matter of fact, I just got a, took a listing. I just got a listing two days ago. Um, random individual. He called me from one other listing that I have down the street. Went to their house, and uh, and you know I just started talking to him. Just started getting to know him. Why they're moving? Where they're moving? Um, uh, and, and just getting to know what was the motivation behind it. And, and sure enough, I mean, they move into Tennessee, they need to move with their, with their family, and there's no, there's no better time than now to sell their house. And I told them, I'm like, this is, you're doing this move on a perfect time. Like, this is better than ever. Yeah, I mean, when you reassure them using words like that, yeah. I mean, it makes, it makes you feel good. Like, oh, I'm dealing with the right person here. Yeah, and if you say, well, I don't know if it's the best time or well, you could wait another year or whatever. It's, it's just like saying this is the perfect time because it truly is right now. Okay, you can come into a, a seller's house with the best listing presentation ever, but if you don't have the confidence or the knowledge, nothing's gonna ever happen, okay? If you're confident about yourself and how you present yourself and, and knowing the market, people are gonna go with you. So when you say, hey, this is how much your house is worth and this is why, you know, after seeing the house and this is the strategies that we can do to be able to sell your house, um, don't doubt yourself by any, by any means. Like, don't go back and say, well, we can do this. Well, we can do that. Then at that point, the seller's like, in their own mind, they're thinking, I'm like, is this guy the right individual? I might want to meet with somebody else because you have too many doubts. You're doubting yourself. So when you say this is, the number and this is why stick to it and and obviously yeah. you know why right because that's how much the house is worth um and and a lot and a lot a lot of times has to do with um showing them showing them the facts it's about letting them know facts people want to know facts if i want to sell my my house i want to know the if a realtor's coming in i want to know facts i don't want to know if they're going to do all kinds of marketing for me i want to know What's gonna be my net? How much I'm gonna make? That's what people really care about, to be honest. Yeah. How much they're gonna make, right? Um, so I'm gonna, sh in, in just a little bit, right after we go over this quick slide, slideshow, um, tomorrow I have a listing appointment. 
as a matter of fact, it was perfect timing. And then I'm gonna show you how I present my, uh, my listing, I, I go through my listing presentations, okay? Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, so why you should go after listings? Listings will give you leads, will give you more listings, and will give you leverage. It's gonna, it will give you more time, okay? If you do it right. Now, how often do you list a house and you don't even bother to put a for sale sign outside? I mean, that's a tons of sign calls that you're gonna get. That's free marketing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, how often do you, how often do you um, go and let the neighbors know how much the property is gonna be listed before the property goes live? That's perfect timing about letting the other neighbors, hey, this property is gonna go on the market. We're gonna list it for 300,000. Um, please let me know if you have a friend and family who's looking to buy, um, buy their home, buy a home. So, I mean, you utilize neighbors because neighbors, the same reason that that neighbor is, is moving might be the same reason why the next neighbor wants to move too. Exactly. You know, uh, you just, you just don't know unless you ask. And it's not like cold door knocking. You're oh. basically just giving them information and they, they want to know because that home is going to hit the market. How much is it going to sell it yes. for? Like, like, you know, they want to know. So might as well be you then, because sooner or later, if that home goes on the market, I bet you within a week or two, another home will hit the market Always. too in the same street. You'd be like, what the hell? Why didn't you call me? Yes. Right. <laughs> and, and that's uh, so, so true. It's, it's, it's intentional door knocking. It's not cold calling. No, no, it's not no. cold knocking. It's here's the value. Mm -hmm. Here we go. And when it comes to open house uh, time, the same thing. It's yeah. like letting them know. So here's here's a, a way that you can create more listings from from um, from one listing. One before it hits the market, let them know. Hey guys, this property is gonna hit the market next week. If you have somebody interested, please let me know. I can set up appointments before going live. So pre-marketing the property. Uh, number two, as soon as the property hits the market, hey guys, this property already hit the market. Tomorrow we're gonna be hosting an open house or this weekend. Feel free to come. If you would like to get your home value, I'll be there from this time to this time, right? So you giving them more value. Three, when the property goes on the contract, hey, we got this property already in the contract. Same, same thing that you're doing on Facebook, but you're doing targeting, like you're targeting people right now. See, it's, it's a whole different game. So that property goes on the contract. Then the property closes. Hey, I sold this property for top dollar. My seller made this, this, and that, you know? And same thing, give them to the same neighbors. Yeah. I guarantee you, you get a listing out of that. How many do you do? None. No, I mean like how many clients do you Oh, I'm sorry. So I, that's what I was doing back then. I don't have the time now to do it. I mean, I wish I did. Um, at least 50 doors. 50 doors. 50 doors. Yeah. If you can do more, by by all means. So whatever you're capable of. Now that he just gave you some like massive nuggets here, yeah. like that's yeah. massive. Yeah. Four step process right there. And if you can do this, uh, there there is a guarantee you will get a listing, and which equates to thousands of dollars uh, in the return. So and additional transactions in the future. And as a matter of fact, as you're doing it, post on social media. Yeah. I mean, hey guys, <laughs> I'm door knocking, letting my neighbors know, uh, letting the neighbors know that this property just went live or this, this and that, and you get more exposure. It's all about exposure and utilize every, every step of the process to put yourself out there, every step of the process. So that's how listings will give you more listings. And uh, obviously buyers too, those listings are gonna get, get you buyers and they'll give you a whole lot more time to prospect more and get more listings, okay? All right, any questions so far? No? All right, perfect. Question. Yeah. When you do list a house, um, how soon do you do an open house? Before you list it, or as soon as you list it? Do you, you do it, the market being so hot right now. Okay, then you wanna, you, you can do, my advice, if you have the time to do a, uh, an open house before going live and letting your seller know, hey, this is gonna be the strategy. First, we're gonna host an open house what can, to see what kind of feedback we get. Yes. Right? Um, then once, once you host that open house, then the next step will be going live. 
So you pre-market the property with this kind of market. And you give yourself an option of to sell it yourself. Yeah. Sure yeah, yeah. If the right buyer comes in and the right offer comes in and the seller is okay with it, why not? So just right. notate that on your uh, listing agreement that, hey, it's going to go live on this day, but we're going to hold an open house on this yeah, day you gotta just let to protect yourself. Yeah, yeah you protect yourself and your client. You give yourself like two weeks from the time that the seller signs the listing agreement, you put on the additional comments or notes. You give yourself two weeks maybe to go live? I'll, I'll say depending on... On, on, on the seller, right? Yeah. It, it can be a week, it can be two weeks. I mean, some sellers, they take about three weeks to get a home ready, so mm -hmm. it, it varies. I mean, there's no such a thing as a specific time frame. Mm -hmm. It's more about doing it, right? All right, so that's basically how you're gonna be able to get secure more listings. Now, tomorrow, I'm be going to a listing appointment, okay? So Os Oscar Castro reached out to me today, like, hey, Ruben, I want to list my house. And here's, here's the thing, guys. Um, when somebody wants to list their house and they want to buy another house, I mean, try to get them pre-qualified ASAP because you don't want to list their house and not knowing if they can even buy. You know, you don't want to leave them in the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's common sense, but you'd be surprised. Yeah, exactly. So I think this is an important step in the process. How do you make them, how do you build rapport with them there? They said, well, I want to buy. Do you automatically go, well, let, let's check with my lender to make sure that everything is good on that side? How, how do you approach that? Well, here's the thing. I, I screen people real fast because if, I, if, if they answer the questions that I want to know, then I want to set up the appointment like today. You know? So people that own a home, most likely they already know, obviously they already know the process somewhat and they might be in a good shape to be able to buy another house, right? But you still wanna, you wanna ask them. For example, ask them like, hey Oscar, so all right, cool, so you wanna sell your house, perfect. Um, if you wanna buy another house, I wanna make sure that we can secure your financing on the next house uh, before listing your house because I don't wanna leave you on the streets. And then yep. obviously make a joke out of it, right? And he starts, you know, he, he starts laughing. So I'm like, all right, cool. So. Tell me something about you, or tell me a little bit, a little bit about you. Have you, um, have you been working for the two years? Have you been consistent with your employment? Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, you know, people are proud about their jobs. Yeah, I've been yeah. working for 14 years. I'm like, all right, cool, perfect. <laughs> what about your credit? Have you been current with the payments, not just your mortgage, car payments, credit cards, so on and so forth? People know if, if they've been on point or not. And and if Oscar says. Yeah, I've been on point. I mean, my credit is over 700 FICO score. All right, perfect. Well, let's do this. Let me check my calendar so I can set up an appointment. So I don't, I go buy my calendar, calendar like at least 100% of, of the times. Like, hey, hey guys, let me, let me know, uh, let, let, me, let me check when I'm available. Um, so I set them up for tomorrow at uh, 11.30 in the morning. Only if it's available, right? If it's not available, then, you know, we can manage. Um, and then as soon as as soon as I hang up, I put on my CRM and I start taking notes. Like I start writing notes of why he's moving. He's moving to a bigger house. He he has um, an, a, a new uh, newborn, so they need to move. So I, I already know why he's moving. And 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 for me to walk in and be able to um, get the listing, it's gonna make things a lot more easier. And during the, the um, during the appointment, if I can get the lender on the phone to get them started with getting pre-qualified, why not? I mean, I'm already meeting with them, so might as well get them pre-qualified, right? And he might need he might need to submit some paperwork, but that's fine. I mean, as long as we know that we're working with a qualified buyer, qualified buyer for the next purchase, then I I'd be good with uh, listing the listing his house. That will give me peace of mind. Right. But you also build like, oh, this guy's genuinely concerned about, you know, my well-being. Exactly. And that's 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 what truly people want to feel mm -hmm. that they chose the right person. Right. In any profession. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you and, and that's where it comes down to to your ethics. You know, you want to make sure you do right for people and they'll come back and give you the, give yeah. you the same favor. Um, all right. So that's that's with my CRM. I started adding notes and make sure that I'm staying on top of it. Um, you know, I, this is the property he owns. So I have, literally, I pull out my laptop just the way I'm doing it right uh, with you guys right now. 
and I start showing him, okay, all right, so if we list your house, so like, like I mentioned before, they want to know facts, right? They don't want to know, they want to know how much they're going to make. Let's, let's be honest. And, and I'll make things very, very simple. So I do my comparables right there and then, right in front of their face. Like, hey, this is, this is why your home is worth a certain amount. And I already have an idea. I mean, the way I have my, my, my tabs open, I already have them ready so I can move on from one to another. I don't want to do the research. I already know the research, uh, the research that, I have to be, that has to be done. So when I get there, it's there. I, I just need to show them the facts, right? So just to, to um, refine this, it's he does all this before he actually meets with the client, and then at that point he does uh, he I has everything. The process. Open. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so here with uh, with Oscar, I run the comparables and I show him, hey, this is these are your comparables. Unless you're dealing with somebody that owns a, home, a custom home and has all kinds of uh, you know upgrades and you know it's a whole different. Uh, animal. For the most part, we're dealing between three, two to two to five hundred thousand dollar buyers, or I mean sellers, I should say. Uh, and you go through. I go through the same process from a buyer that is selling their home, a uh, seller that is selling their home for two hundred thousand, to a seller that is selling their home for six hundred thousand. Now above that, then it takes a little more more homework. Um, so with with Oscar, this is this is his subdivision. These are the properties that have been so, uh, sold and pending for the past for the past um, uh, six, months. six months. Now, here's the thing. Before I show him this, I saw the house, right? Before I already saw everything that he has. So before I even turn on my computer and show him the comparables, I started taking, that, taking out the houses that I don't think is a good match for his house. I haven't seen the house yet. So as soon as I get there, I'm like, all right, so let me show you the comparables. And then I start unchecking the houses that don't match his house. His house might be better, his house might be worse. That, that depends on, on the house that he, that he owns. Um, so tomorrow I have no idea what his house looks like until I get there. So once I get there, um, I'll let them know, hey, these are the comparables and this is why, uh, this is what's gonna give us your value of your house. Any, any, any seller or any property that we list is gonna get appraised. Anybody that wants to purchase this property We'll go to an appraisal uh, process, and that appraiser is gonna use the same comparables that I'm, uh, that I'm about to show you. So you can list your house for 300,000, but if it's not really worth 300,000, it's worth 215, then guess what? We're gonna be spinning our wheels. We need to be realistic about um, selling your house, which that's the end result, that's the end goal. All right, so I show them, you know, I create the radio search. These are the listings. I already have the properties that that I think it's gonna, that matches his house. So give and take with this, I do a quick CMA. <laughs> and it's for the most part, once I start taking out the properties that don't make sense, mm -hmm. it's right on the money. Like yeah. it's right on the money. Um, so how did you come up to the CMA so people will know how to get here? All right, so here, I created the search. Now from the, how, how I do my search? I, I go I go through I go through yeah I go through uh, just regular MLS map search what, what the criteria I guess like um, okay all right so so for for example this home is it's it's sixteen hundred square feet so I want to be between fourteen and eighteen hundred I don't want to go too small or too big I want to kind of stay in in between right yeah the, the common practice is anywhere between ten and fifteen percent GLA yeah, of exactly. the actual home exactly. So I stay on the, on, the, on the size. So obviously six months, I wanna look at properties that have been closed, pending, <coughs> under contract, and active, okay? I wanna see my competition. Um, obviously single family residence and the square footage. I don't, do, I don't change anything else. Besides uh, if they have a pool or that kind of stuff, right? And if it's single story, two story, right? Yeah, I stay with, like I said guys, apples to apples, yeah. okay? Don't try to comp a house with a two-story or a two-story to a single level. Try to stay within the same, same, same kind of property. You don't do your build? Huh? Do your build? Uh, you could, oh. if it's a mixture, usually when you're within the same subdivision, okay. it includes all that. But if you have a mixture of the two, 
Here's uh, then maybe uh, it's usually 10 years as well. That's a good question. So when you do a radio search, obviously it's going to show like this, right? It's going to take all kinds of neighborhoods. So when I do that, then I remove, I, I, I want to stay on the same subdivision. If I can get comparables on the same subdivision, the better. <laughs> if not, then, then I start, you know, moving to different areas. So once I do that, then I'll remove the radio search and I just stay on the same subdivision. Because if the same subdivision is giving me comparables that match that property, then there's no need for me to go somewhere else. And that's what that's how appraisers do it too. Mm -hmm. If they have comparables here, there's no need for them to go across the street because they already have them here. So, let's so uh, so everyone gets that. So um, we can easily do a one mile radius, uh, you know, and that's where you typically start. So what he does, he goes to the very bottom here. There's a little pin, that little pin there, and he does a one mile radius around there. But if he sees there's a there's a there's a congestion of comps within that same neighborhood, he forgets about that one mile radius and really yeah. focuses down on. That's why he has that box now because yeah. he really focused down to that area. Even though the circle initially was much bigger, he saw that all of those comps and he's like, I don't need to go beyond that. And now he's got really good comps. But in some areas, you will have to go and stretch it out to that yeah. one mile yeah. point yeah. just because there's not enough sales in those areas. So um, start with the one mile and then bring it in. Sometimes okay, have, you have to go to three miles yeah. depending on the property. Like mm -hmm. I said, um, if you stay in between two to five hundred thousand uh, dollar listings, then you don't have to go too far out. But then, if you get to a custom home, then that's when you start, you know, di doing different uh, research. Uh, so that's that's my way to compare a home, right? So once I get this list, I go over the results. So you break that down. So you select a list of homes before you even get there of what you think it might be worth. You yes. got the lows, you got the highs. Mm -hmm. And then when he's actually there, I love that. I love yeah. that because uh, there's, there's nothing worse than coming in with the wrong cops, right? You yeah. Know, <laughs> like going in and thinking yeah. that this house is going to be like the yeah. other house that is yeah. sold and they've completely upgraded it or is completely like uh, on the other end where you bring cops that are $50,000 too much mm -hmm. for the property that they have. Right. So he's got the highs, he's got the lows. And then as he's there, he's unchecking the ones that are no longer yeah, before uh, I, 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 I turn my computer around to show him the comparables, I'm like, uncheck, 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 uncheck. <laughs> check, check, check. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, guys. And then, and then once you have one, you can easily do a CMA and kind of okay. get to know the if that's the right number or not. For example, I already did that. I went through all the comparables before I even came here. Um, I found three properties that match his house. I mean, his house was built in 2016. Um, about 1,600 square feet. There's three properties that just sold in the past um, in the past uh, six months. As a matter of fact, in the past three months. So from the from here, from the properties that I picked, I go to uh, uh, CMA right on this corner, and then from there it's gonna show me the actual report, right? So there's a property that sold for 255. There's a property that sold for 245, and there's one that sold for 230. So I use uh, my selected results. Let's go with a quick CMA here. And average selling point, uh, average, uh, selling point it's 243,000, 18 days on the market. I mean, it's, it's dead on. And so, like I said, sometimes you gotta make some changes depending on the property. But for the most part, it's pretty dead on. And then at that point, I show the graph, I show the properties, I show the comparables then you show them the, you're showing them the facts. the facts like this is it like i'm not making stuff up now i noticed that you didn't have any active listings or showing them in any active or pending no What's um, the strategy there okay the reason that i don't i don't sh it comes down to close listings i mean why okay. am i going to show them a pending that i don't know if it's going to appraise why am i showing an active listing if i don't know if it's going to sell i only show them active listings if i feel that i i need to utilize that to a uh, to my advantage like saying hey this if, if they say, I want to list my house for whatever amount. 270. All right, let me look at the listings. Hey, this property has, has been listed for, for example, that's a great question. So I use that to push back on them. When they say, well, I don't want to list it for 245, I want to list it for 260. I'm like, all right, cool. Let me let me see what's act uh, active right now. So it's going to take, uh, I can go back to, easily go back to the list. I'm like, all right. So here's the property that is listed for 259, 1700 square feet, and it's been listed for 18 days and it hasn't moved. My, my, I think that property is overpriced. And as a matter of fact, that property is bigger than your house. 
So you're not gonna make 260 out of this house. And that's brand new. And it's brand new. Yeah. Yours is used. Yeah. <laughs> Yours is ugly. <laughs> so it comes down to facts. Like if you don't have facts to show them, then it's, it's gonna be hard for you to rebuttal. It's gonna be hard for you to say, Yeah. you know, that's why you gotta know, you gotta be confident about the, yes. the, the information that you're giving them and, and don't let them push you because they, they have, you know, it's not, it's not a battle. It's about just uh, the right price. Just the right price, for, uh, do a framework, the process, and it shouldn't be a reason of any questioning. And I think their uh, new agents are always at odds or, uh, you know, those that haven't had many listings are always at odds about their value because they're looking at the actives and they're looking at the pendings when the facts are the solds. That's all you can really base it off of. So if you go that strategy, you'll be more confident. You will exude that confidence at the listing presentation. But if you have, if you keep on looking at the actives and the pendings, you're going to be like, I don't even know if I have the right value. Well, the facts are the facts. Yeah. And, and, and let them know. And you can say, hey, we can list your house for whatever you want. But if th this is what's going to happen. One, your home is going to sit there. It's not going to move. That's the first, because any, any buyer that what comes in, they're going to do the same homework that I'm doing. Okay, they're going to check if the property is worth whatever amount. That's one. Number two, if we do get a buyer, it's going to get a price. And that appraisal is going to push back again. So we're going to have to end up reducing the price sooner or later, and it's going to cost a lot more pain than what it's needed. So let's just price it right, get it sold, move on to the next uh, next um, uh, process, which is obviously buying another house or moving or whatever, whatever they want to do. Yeah. Depending on the property. I, I normally try to say between um, six and 10 at the most. So depending, there's sometimes that I, like this one, there's only three good comparables that I can, um, uh, I can relate the property to, but I mean. The minimum? Yeah. I'll say three, you gotta, you gotta have more than three. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, it's, it's gonna get a praise. What are appraisers look? They, they go based off uh, five comparables for the most part, five to six. So I try to stay within the number. Um, so that's, that's any other questions on this? Yes. Do you ever ask them what, like before you do this, like when do you ask them if they think it's worth? I, I have, <laughs> uh, when I'm doing the initial, yes. uh, walking around the house, Hey, have you checked to see how much your house is worth? Um, savvy, savvy, savvy sellers, savvy sellers will say, well, we want to see what you got to say. Yeah. We want to see what you have to offer or what you, you know, um, and there's some sort of like, well, I check on cello and it says that is sometimes they're dead on. I'm like, this cello okay. is dead on. Some, and sometimes it's way off. So, yeah, I do ask. I do. Got it. Yeah. Like, got hey, it. have you checked how much your house is, by, is for? <laughs> All, right. All right. So now, once they know the facts, they know how much the property is worth, then I move on to, to my next slide, right? Which is my um, estimate, esti estimated net sheet. I want to let them know how much, they, how much they're going to make out of the, the sale of the house. Like, I want to keep things as transparent as possible um, because I don't like people questioning me at the end. Like, hey, Ruben, why am I making $1,000 more? One th oh, not, not more, less. Yeah, <laughs> never uh, complain, they about never more. complain about more. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever amount, you know. That's the last conversation I want to have with any of my clients, either buyers or sellers. Like, don't come back to me at the very last minute and start questioning the numbers. And feel like you, you took advantage of them somehow. Yeah. You want to be straight up here. Mm -hmm. This is what you get. Uh, does everybody know how to get here? Who does not know how to get here? Okay. All right. So I won't repeat it. No We're one? Good. All right. All right. Okay, yeah. good. So the estimated niche is very simple. And, and for the most part, I save it and I'm basically pretty dead on, on those numbers as well. Um, so I'll, then I go through a scenario. All right, if we list your house, then I'm, I'm already starting to put the, put the mindset, right, about listing the house. All right, if we, let's run a quick scenario. Let's say we give and take, you have your house ready in how many days? Two, three, Wait. three days, all right, perfect. So I'll send somebody to take pictures on Monday. Um, I get them within 24 hours. It should go live on Wednesday. Depending on days on the market, we should be able to get an offer within the first two weeks. Okay, so I'm like, all right, let's say we list your house on on 620th and we close on July 24th, give and take. Um, your taxes are this amount. 
Uh, this guy owns a house free and clear. There's no mortgage, so there's zero. I add their mortgage too. Um, you know, I kind of guesstimate like, well, hey, what's your principal balance? And, and that number might, might be a little bit off. So if my numbers are off at the end, it wasn't because it was, it was my fault. It was the payoff or, you know. Did you ask him that before you met with him? About what? That he, that he owned his house free and clear? Yeah, he told me. I, I want to know if, yeah, that's one of the questions I ask, I ask at the beginning. I'm like, hey, do you still have a mortgage? And people says, yeah, it's still, or, or no, it's paid off. Uh, just because that's going to give me a perspective, or not, not a perspective, but that's going to give me the information that I need to know if, how, of how much equity they have, how much money they have to work with. Because if they're saying, hey, I want to sell my house and, be able, and buy this other house, then I already know how much, uh, um, how much uh, money they have to work with on the, towards the new house. All these questions are the same things that we have on the listing questionnaire. I mean, go that he follows that to the T. Of course, you're gonna add your own little mix uh, to it. Yeah, mix to it. But those are the questions you need to, to really approach the, the 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 process, the listing process. Okay. Um, with this, it makes them feel really good, right? This entire process. Yeah. I mean, when you, I mean, I'm telling you guys, anybody that wants to sell their house or anything, they want to know facts. Even if you're selling a car, they want to know, hey, why are you asking this amount? They want the car facts. Yeah. <laughs> What's the car facts? <laughs> I don't know facts. Uh, real quick, I, I don't know if you caught this, but notice his demeanor towards the seller. He's already saying, like, we're already working together. That's a, that's a given. Hey, like, if we, if we list it on Sunday, not if you decide to list with yeah. me, it's if we list it on Sunday, this is what's going to happen. And, and I love that because it, it really brings that, he's bridging the gap of we were strangers or we were, you know, now we're a team. We're working together. So, so I'm, already, I'm already putting it out there. I'm like, we're going to list a house. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to send the professional photographer. Like, I'm not yes. saying, oh, I'm going to do this, this, I'm going to do that. No. Hey, I'm going to send the professional photographer. The, you know, we want to make sure that your home shows the best way possible. So you might have to do a little cleaning here. You know, like you start, you know, speed yourself. Um, if it's a mess, I tell them, I'm like, yeah, hey, you got to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you want to leave $20,000 on the table or do you want to make $20,000 more? Well, I want to make, okay. Then you got to hire somebody to come and get that property clean or you're going to have a lot, a lot to do. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh my God. I, you I'm tell them exactly, right? Move all this. Yeah. Yes. Box all this up. Yeah. You know, the, the, the Virgin Mary off the... Yeah. Off the, <laughs> off the <laughs> everything. Like, you got to get everything up. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, let, let's be real. And, and let them know, hey, you got to think like a buyer now. If, if you walk into a home, how do you want your home to show? Right? Yes. So, well, I want a home. All right, good. Get your home ready. Get it, get it the best... I, I, to your possibilities. I don't want you to like overstress yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, if you tell me, hey, I'm gonna paint it, paint it. But if you cannot paint it, don't worry about it. Yeah. Let's list it the way it is and, and we can price the home accordingly. Like do what you can without having to stress about it, right? Um, Love it. So once I have the, the, the numbers plugged in, then you go to, I PDF the format so they can easily understand where I'm coming from. Um, I already input 6% in here. So there's, there's no questions about the percentage. So I go over the net sheet and I let them know, hey, the right side is the seller side, the left side is the buyer. So don't worry about the buyers, let's just worry about your side. So I let them know right up here, if we list your house for 245,000, um, the, these are your fees, 6% commission, 3% for the listing agent and 3% for the buyer's agent. And the reason that we pay 3% to the buyer's agent is because we want to let everybody know that your home is going on the market and we want those realtors that have qualified buyers bring them to us. Because the more buyers we have, guess what's going to happen? The more we can sell your house. So we want to make sure that everybody knows about your home being on the market. And, and not just that, we want to get qualified buyers. We don't want just anybody walking into your house. All right? So that's, that's how, you know, because it, for the most part, they're gonna ask, why am I paying the other agent? You know, well, this is, this is why we want qualified buyers. Yeah. What? Okay, so it depends on the seller, and I let them know, 0.5%, 1%, less or more, is not gonna 
it's not gonna be my a deal breaker okay my goal is for you to refer me anybody else that you know uh, that is thinking about buying or selling so if you say hey Ruben I want you to drop drop it 5.5 percent it's not gonna hurt me whatsoever my goal is for you to refer me to other individuals that's where I'm that's where I'm looking for and and a lot of people they're like well, well let's just leave it at three then <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you do have to change it you know yeah. it varies um, but that's that's what I'm pushing for referrals mm -hmm. all right um, one of the ways you can explain uh, you know when they see that big number 165 you can also say that includes all taxes that includes title fees okay, escrow so fees be very specific with that. that's where I'm going for so so there's the 14,700 Commission then there's the auto policy the title policy uh, there's the escrow fee of 429 recording fee give and take $50 so to sell the house it's gonna it's, you're gonna be paying 16524 we'll put it up here subtract it from the 245 subtract your taxes you'll be making about 227,000 now if your home has been listed for three weeks and we have we don't get any activity whatsoever and then we get a buyer that says hey seller I'm willing to offer you asking price but I need you to help me with my closing cost then your net will drop between 222 to 20 depending on how much we you agree to help them with closing costs I don't put it on the net just because I don't know what kind of buyer we're gonna get I mean that buyer might say you know what I don't want any closing costs I want to have buy the house right now and I want to pay more depending on you know the, depending on the market um, but I don't you know they're looking for the, the highest net mm -hmm. So why are you gonna put numbers that Hypothetical. you don't even know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, so you always run another one, and and uh, you could reassure them. Hey, mm -hmm. we'll run another one once we get an offer, mm -hmm. so you can, you know. So, so let them know. This mm -hmm. Nechi is just estimate estimated Nechi. Yes. So once we get an offer, I'm gonna put the Nechi together again, so we can go over the numbers and be able to the, to compare this to whatever you decide to go with. Cool. All right. Now let's get started. So I do a listing uh, agreement for six months. That means that you're gonna st be, uh, be stuck with me for six months. Uh, you won't be able to list it with nobody else but myself. Um, I ain't gonna represent you to your best, um, uh, what's my color? Uh, I got stuck. The, uh, the, yeah, so you're, you're explaining this contract. Oh, I'm gonna represent you uh, and your best interest, right? To your best interest, okay. yeah. So I'll be representing you through, uh, to your best interest. Uh -huh. um, I do a six month contract and my advice, like I mentioned before, 245,000. Uh, let's talk about the items that you're gonna live with the house. Like there's no, like, no questions about who, if I'm gonna do call another want, agent yeah. or <laughs> do you wanna list the house? Like I'm listing the house. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I'm like, all right, so cool. Everything that is attached to a home stays with the home. Okay, you know, window. if you love that, ceiling fan take it down before I list the house but if you're okay with staying then leave it there you know I use it as an example and you're also looking out for the best interest again yeah yeah so I'm letting them know if there's something that you really want to take with you take it with you like I had a seller they're like hey Ruben I love my tree like <laughs> my tree. like I brought it from who knows where and they're like take it out put on a big pot and then now you can take it yeah, yeah like true. don't 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 leave it there because I'm not gonna negotiate the tree on the contract. That must be the money tree. Like, like, yeah, exactly. Like, tree in the front yard does not convey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know, let, let them know. Hey, whatever you want to take, take it before yeah. I we we go live. Um, uh, and obviously we go over the process, you know, appliances and so on and so forth. Um, so another thing you could do, just a little add, because I've heard you do it and I've done it many times. With the refrigerator, washer, and dryer, even if they want to leave it, say, hey, we'll go ahead and just leave it off the MLS and we'll use that as a negotiation A renegotiation. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they're coming in, we can say, hey, we'll throw in the washer and dryer, but we still want this money. So let's just leave it off. Yeah. Even though you don't want them, uh, this will help it's out. It's a renegotiation, renegotiation too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, I don't want to fix this, but you can keep the fridge. Yeah. All right, cool. You know, yeah. they're, they want to leave it anyways. All right. So the commission, of, we already talked about 6%. Um, lockbox so when when the, the normally the people the individual that, that are higher they put a, the picture the lockbox and the sign right at the same time so they're gonna be here on Monday uh, what time did you say that works for you between nine and, okay perfect between nine and ten they'll be here <laughs> all right cool um, uh, then 
you know, I, I'm kind of showing them the, the listing agreement going through the process. Um, you are responsible for maintaining the power on until we close on the property. Do not shut anything down. Um, just because if the buyer cancels or they get the loan denied, then the property goes back, goes back on the market, then we have to start, start all over again. And guess what? I don't, I'm not gonna charge you anymore. The 6% will be 6%, so even if I have to start all over again. I mean, it's more work, right? Yeah. So might as well let them know that if it does cancel or if it falls through, you're still gonna do all the work and you're not gonna charge them more money. Everybody get that? So I'm, I'm, I'm hearing them from left and right and when they, when the worst case scenario comes our way, it goes smooth. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, this guy wasn't able to qualify. They got, you know, they got denied because they lost their job a day before close of escrow, which that just happened to me. Um, we're gonna have to put the property back in the market. But don't worry, I'm not charging you more. <laughs> hey, don't worry, I got you. Um, so it, it is, it's gonna be a pain, it's gonna, but it's gonna, be, it's gonna go a lot more smoother than not preparing them. You always wanna prepare them for the best and for the worst. That's good. What are some of the major points you kind of go through just so that, you know, I know there's some uh, newer agents here that are just are about to go on their new listing uh, appointment and some of them get stuck thinking they have to explain every little thing here. Is there some major points of this document that you kind of go over? Honestly, the way I'm telling you, that's the way I'm like, all right. And yeah. whatever pops up, I'm like, well, this is, this is how it is and this is how it goes. General warranties, hey, you're just guaranteeing that you're gonna be. You yeah, know, yeah. You're, yeah. So you can highlight the bullet points. Hey, we're, gonna, we're just gonna go over the bullet points. Um, and for the most part, you know, if, if the property it's an older home, lead based paint, uh, you know, the spuds, you can go through. I, for the most part, I don't. My goal is to get there, get the listing, and get out. And one way you can, it's, it's, they have to go over the entire contract. They, obviously, if they have questions, they're going to answer, but, you know, reassuring them this is a, the state contract. Yeah. This is a state contract. Like this is not something you didn't make up. Something the brokers didn't make. This is a state contract. A standard state contract. Yeah, let them. I told them from the very beginning. You, this is a contract. We're gonna be stuck with each other for the next six months. Yeah. I mean, over over a year or two years, whatever, whatever the contract is. So once I go through the listing agreement, obviously, you know, offers. Okay, perfect. So once we start getting offers, um, I'm gonna advise you of how to negotiate. This is where my negotiation skills come into place. So when, depending, if we, if we get multiple offers, this is how we, how we can maneuver the situation. We can, you know, we can s tell all the buyers, hey, we have multiple offers, so make your best offer possible. Then we can decide which offer we wanna go with. Um, that's if we get multiple buyers that wanna buy your house. If we get one buyer that wants to negotiate terms, then I can let you know which terms we can push back and kind of offer until we have an agreement. And uh, last but not least, but uh, last but not least, once we have an offer accepted, meaning that we have an agreement with the other party, um, then at that point, your property goes on the contract. We cannot take any other contracts. If we get more contracts, we can keep them as a backup, only if the other party wants to stay as a backup. Cool. Um, so at that point, I let them know what's gonna happen with, you know, with any any offers that we get after the fact, if anything. And that's it. Let's get your listing agreement signed. Let me send it to you via DocuSign. So I, mean, I still use SIP form, so I haven't <laughs> transitioned to <laughs> transaction desk. We have a class next week, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> I took two two already, and I still. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's yeah. hard to, to move a <laughs> yeah. big shit like that. Yeah. Huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's what everybody said. That's so. So once I am done explaining the listing agreement, I let them know. Hey, most of the paperwork that I'm gonna be sending you is gonna be electronic uh, signatures. Have you ever done them? You know, some people they have knowledge. Some people don't even know. Uh, yeah, I know how to electronic signature. All right, cool. We're gonna sign everything electronically right now. So I'll go through my e-sign. Go to next. So I want everyone aware of the tabs he used. I mean, this is a, a formula that's been perfected over the years, hundreds of transactions. The tabs, just have them there in line. It, it keeps you a structure, it gives you a framework to just mm -hmm. have it flow. And it's a process, like people, I love when there's a flow to yeah, things. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. That's and this is exactly what he does. So keep those tabs in line. Yeah. So um, obviously before I leave, I have the printout spuds. 
So I let them know, hey, I'm gonna leave a little homework with you. I need you to complete this package before we get a buyer. So, like I said, I'm not, go I'm not gonna sit there another half an hour to try to complete the spots, right? My goal is to, all right, I deliver the message to, or the, the, my presentation. I don't, I don't need to know if, leak, if the roof leak. Hey, just put it on the spots. And then that's something that we're gonna provide to whoever wants to purchase your house. Um, obviously, any material facts that you know about your home, put it in there. Um, then I'll send the listing agreement for signatures. I help them sign it right there because some people, they have issues. Then they, they sign it, I'll sign my part, send it to my TC, and there's a new listing. Ruben, I'm not ready for it right now. Like, how do you handle that? We need, th we need to think about it. Ruben. All right, so if you mentioned to me that you're looking to move to Tennessee, uh, and I'm telling you that this is the best market to sell your house, what's holding you back? You're right. And then I'd be yeah. quiet. Like, yeah. let them, <laughs> like, <laughs> don't, <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> like, don't oversell yourself. No, That's you already the, did the selling. Yeah, I already did the you selling. Like, all, don't go through the entire process yeah. again. Bite your tongue. Yeah. And that's like on some of the best books out there when it comes to like framework, when it comes to influence, they tell you just to shut up. Like, yeah. say something, just shut up. It's, it takes practice. Yeah, and so, <laughs> so I'm like, well, you told me why you want to move. Here are the facts. Um, you can be in Tennessee in two months. Why do you want to hold up the process? Oh, really, like, we just like to think about things. Um, I'll tell you what. <laughs> 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 um, and there's gonna be people. There's, yeah. there's gonna be scenarios of that course. that it's gonna be. You know, people are gonna be. I mean, even if I go through the process, they're still gonna be like, you know what? Let, let, we're gonna think about it. Let us let us dissect everything, or let us you know um, slip over it, and then we'll get back to you. Perfect. Um, let's do this. Think about it. Um, I can be here tomorrow around 5 p.m. and discuss the 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 uh, whatever um, concerns, concern. issues. No, yeah. no, no, no. Whatever decision you have made. Oh, okay. Okay. No, there's no concerns. There's no issues. I want to know what's gonna be yes or no. And as, as a matter of fact, I like to come face to face. I hate going or dealing with contracts over the phone. You know, let let, let me come back, meet again. Good. And then you let me know if it's a yes or no, or, or, or any questions that you might have. It's harder to say no in person, right? Yeah, it's a lot harder to say no in person. You start giving them the puppy eyes and everything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always works, man. Always works. And, and maybe you have to bring a cheesecake, right, Danielle? Cheesecake. <laughs> Cheesecakes. <laughs> How are so they going to say no to that? So, so next time you show up, bring a cheesecake. <laughs> like, I brought you guys a cheesecake. <laughs> I cooked it myself. <laughs> <laughs> not um, a bad strategy though not a bad strategy at all and I mean like I said guys it never go 100% of the times it doesn't happen I never get I don't get every listing every single time uh, but I get most listings yeah. okay and and that's how I follow my I have, that's how I've done it for many many years and that's how I've been it doing it mm -hmm. and, and notice he doesn't have the big fancy presentation he doesn't take hours of their time trying to be a salesman he uses a framework of like this is my outcome. He works with his own personality and also with the personality of the, of the buyer or the buyer or the seller, seller and he makes it work. But if we're regimented to like, I, you have to say this and you have to go through the 10, you know, a 20 slide presentation, mm -hmm. it just takes the energy out of the room. It's it, gotta be you within that framework. It, it takes your own energy. Like at the, oh, at the end, you're like, do you want a list? <laughs> yes or no? Like I gotta go, like I'm tired. <laughs> So if you're going to present them any pre uh, listing presentation, send it to them beforehand. But don't sit there and try to put them through a slideshow. It, it's, they want to know who you are, what you're going to do, words of reassurance, words that we're, we're team. All those things are what master influencers do and master salesmen do. So now if you get to another uh, higher price point, then yes, you can create a nice presentation, have it delivered to their home before you're showing up to the, to the presentation. Mm -hmm. And at that point, um, your presentation will be a lot more easier than you. this process will not work with a one million dollar seller it's not gonna happen okay you gotta think outside the box when you get into that price point this this process works between sellers two to five hundred thousand or maybe two to four hundred thousand you know but once you get to a higher price point then you know it's it's more about you know what you have to offer wow well factor yeah. Yeah. presentation huh <laughs> <laughs> when is that class? 
whenever you get an, an, the next one million dollar listing, <laughs> you let me know. <laughs> yeah, you let me know. We'll put it the week before. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things that I concentrate more on volume. Yeah. That's, that's what I do. And, you know, I have no uh, drive to go for $1 million listings, to be honest, just because I can close 100 times more here before I can sell this one. And don't get me wrong, those uh, the approach that kind of sell it, that's, that's perfectly fine, but you just got to think outside the box once you get to the price point. It's, and, it's just a different and game. The, and the amount of people you impact and, and, and a more stable um, business is through that fact of having more people that you turn around either buying or selling mm -hmm. uh, versus every onesie twosie on these higher price yeah. points. And, and then those, those higher, like, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not against them. I, I, yeah. I mean, who wouldn't want to have, you know, that kind of listings coming your way, but it takes a lot of relationship. That's a relationship driven market. So if you're not involved in their stuff over and over again, it's, it's hard to kind of break in. Yeah. So, right, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> it's true. I yeah. love the checks, those are nice. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, the, the stability and overall expansion of a business is having more people you've dealt with over time. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, like I, if you know, if you re, uh, start spending time with million dollar sellers, you're gonna get million dollar listings. It's a different market. You just have to be involved. It's in involvement. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot more involvement than just hey, all right, I'm gonna list your house kind of thing. So, and they know about twenty other realtors as well, mm -hmm. on a personal level. On a personal level, um, yeah. Okay. Any questions up to this point? I mean, if, even if it's a, like hypotheticals, uh, s simple, we need to know this so we can help you out. Go ahead. Do you explain the process in the listing presentation or once you get an offer? Do I what? Do you explain the, the, the actual process of the real estate transaction? Okay. So like, like I mentioned before, I don't like to over explain things because I don't want to get people too confused. I already went through the, all of this. That right there is going to take me an hour yeah. and to an hour and a half, depending on what, how many questions I have. So once I get an offer, once I start getting offers, then I'm presenting the offers and explaining what the process is gonna be like, uh, you know, during the inspection period, during the appraisal process, uh, what can happen if the buyer gets denied. So I go through that process once I get those offers. Like. Another thing you talked about before, but you mentioned to them the process when you sell a house and then they buy a house, the moving process, you know, you close the same day and we can move in. Okay, that's a, uh, that's, that's a whole different game if, you, if you're dealing with somebody who wants to, and, and ask questions guys before you go through that kind of process where somebody wants to sell their house and buy another one, and if you want to do it at the same time. Uh, it takes a lot of communication, it takes a lot of uh, uh, you being on top of your game, you know, just because, hey, somebody's selling and buying, and the last thing you want is for them to be on the streets. So if I have a, a seller who's thinking about buying, I'm negotiating a, a, a post possession right off the back so they have some time to move to the new house, maybe two days or you know, a day, whatever, whatever it might be. But that's a whole different conversation. We could have that at a later time. Maybe I will do it uh, uh, on a, um, you know, a business breakthrough um, interview mm -hmm. um, because that does take a little bit of <coughs> it takes a lot of communication and it, it does take a lot of strategy and there's gonna be situations where when I mean, most situations are you got to be out and you got to be in the new house on the same day so um, so sometimes as a matter of fact right now I have a family that I put them on the contract even before before listing their home so their home wasn't even on the market when they're already buying another house contingent on selling their house oh, wow. so it takes a lot of communication Must have been a rookie agent on the other side <laughs> no it, it, it wasn't so so I target those houses that I know it hasn't moved for a while, that I can say, hey, mm. wait for us, let me sell my client's house, this is days on the market, and I'll send them fax, hey, it's gonna take us two weeks to get on the contract, we're gonna be able to close on your house in maybe another 30 days, would you, would you be willing to present this, present this offer to your seller? Okay. Half the times, like, send it over, perfect. Mm, send it over on the contract, tell my clients, hey, you're buying another house, Gotta you gotta get your home listed, ready, ready to go by tomorrow. Like you gotta get moving. 
And, and that's harder for a high demand property in an area. It's again, you, you said something really good. It's some, it's a house that has been on the market maybe for a little while, higher mm -hmm. price points. Yeah. Okay. So right now it's perfect for those that own a home that is worth 220 and they can buy a house for 260, much bigger, much better. And the price and their payment. Um, payment difference will be like a hundred dollars, <laughs> if any, you know, it'll be very, very minimal. So that makes perfect sense for anybody that wants to um, upgrade to a better home. You know, and that's an option too. Like if you have a family that would desire a pool, but you know, uh, having to pay, spend 20, 25,000 when they could move into a house that's maybe 50, $75,000 more, but won't require that hefty investment up front, you know, or, and they can sell and buy into that house, the house they really want, bigger house typically, mm -hmm. and with the pool. And that comes down to, once again, targeting people that you know you can, you can help people that have babies there's babies all the time new jobs like come on attack all those individuals you don't know unless you ask you know you start making calls and people start you know letting you know start raising hands all right let's ask more questions what else we got any questions so keep in mind guys it's all about the message that you're putting out you're putting out buyers you're still gonna get buyers you putting us you you putting out a message about sellers you're gonna get sellers. You're gonna host open houses. Push the neighbors. Neighbors are sellers. Okay. I like that. And again, if you don't have that, you can use uh, the brokerage listings. Um, how many listings? I mean, how many properties do we close on a daily or weekly basis? A whole lot, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. You can grab the listing and door knock the neighborhood. That hey, my company sold this property, sold for this amount. Um, if you everything, if you. If you ever thought about selling your house, please give us a call. We'll be happy to help you. Here we go. Move on to the next. How are we doing? It's good stuff, right? Like this is straight to the point, simplified. And uh, you, you put this into your process, you're going to get more listings. And uh, you're going to give uh, a stability to your business uh, with listings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep in mind, guys, leads, listings, leverage. That's what listings are going to give you. Okay, any clarification or anything? Go ahead, Bill. I missed the first few minutes, maybe you covered it, but in terms of your sources for the listings, primarily exist your, your existing clientele, uh, those types of things, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, clientele, family, friends, mm -hmm. anyone he's made in contact like, with, I, I co target people, like I target, like I go to the office, like most of you, you should come to the office every single day, don't stay at home because you're not gonna do nothing at home. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth you gotta get out like get out <laughs> like you have to have that this routine of getting out of your house because yep. when you get stuck yep. in your house you even though you think you're working you're really not come on so <laughs> come on <laughs> quit, quit, quit lying to yourself yeah. liars <laughs> so, so create here's the thing guys you create routine you create right habits over time no matter how you feel the habits will get you up okay the, because you already you've been doing it for such a long time that you even if you feel like crap you're still gonna get up and get going because you have the habits so uh deep, ingrained yeah, yeah ingrained that you're gonna get moving so come to the office and start brainstorming like don't don't just come and see here like start brainstorming like okay who do i you can even target uh expired listings like target pre-foreclosures and instead of trying to cold call, go and door knock. Hey, I noticed that your home canceled or when expire. Let me tell you why. A lot of times it has to do with crappy mm -hmm. marketing. Like crappy marketing. it was hor like, I'm like, man, I don't even know how this guy got this listing. Sometimes I, I'm, I, I, I amaze myself or have some agents get those listings, like certain listings. Like how in the heck did you get this listing? Yeah, and taking uh, pictures with their iPhone. With their phone. Yeah. yeah. Upside down, upside. sideways. With their thumb. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the reflection in the mirror. Like, like, I'm waiting for that listing to go expire so I can go in door knock. Yeah. And I'm like, hey. But I've, you know, here's the thing. Like, I, I've <laughs> noticed Ruben, uh, witnessed him just constantly, just as, as soon as a name pops into, like, I'll actually literally just see him, a name pops up and he's like either texting or calling. Um, and that's the way we got to look at it. It's, it's the sphere that you have. And it's like, that is direct marketing right there at its finest. Mm -hmm. So if somebody in your family or just send them something of value, uh, plant that seed and 
if it doesn't happen today, like it's gonna happen at some point. Yeah. You were gonna tell the story about uh, my my aunt or who? Oh, uh, Mar Martha. Martha. Uh, that's how I got her. Okay. Too. So check it out, guys. So I'm gonna give you a quick. Oh man, this is money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you wanna get listings, right? And you're always promoting these beautiful properties. Um, obviously promote ranch properties. Mm -hmm. Ranch properties will bring you buyers who wants to list their house and buy another ranch property. Like, like horse property, like horse unique property. property yeah, in you, general. Very unique properties. But then don't just post the pictures. Like go to the property, record yourself. Go, like it's invest time. Or invest a little bit of quality in doing that. Because whoever co contacts you is gonna be a seller. Uh, it's gonna be a seller that wants a property or is being one of the properties along the lines. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, most people that I that I talk to, hey, I wish I had this, I wish I had that. Then you put it on your daily marketing process, then you gonna promote a property that's gonna bring you a seller, not just a buyer. Mm -hmm. And again, it's just enticing. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, this particular aunt was living in the same house for many years, um, and and I said, have you ever thought about buying a horse property? And she said, well, can I? A lot of people just don't know if they can make they that move. With all that equity she had, she was able to buy a five acre property, beautiful home, and like very happy with the entire process, sold her home. It was like big transactions, yeah. right? And uh, it was just by me simply doing my homework, just calling out and say, hey, auntie, like, have you ever thought about this? Look at the, check out like, this home and that. Hey, Ruben, my wants to sell a house. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. It's just. Uh, it's one of those things. But yeah, if something pops in, if someone pops in your mind, and we all have those relationships, there's a unique situation that's changed over. No one has the same situation in the past five years. Something has changed. Jobs, making more money, babies, divorce. Like, there's so many things that come from that. It's your job just to entice. And her thing was like, she didn't think it was possible. And she said, can't, can we? Said, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Ruben took it, took care of yeah. it from there. He's like, boom, I'll sell her house, bought another ranch, a five acre ranch. I'm like, all right, cool. So um, who knows someone that you can start reaching out? Like put a list together and start calling people. Like, hey, did you know you, you know, and, and obviously it's gonna take a lot of, a little bit of homework, but it's but doable. Just, but just imagine everyone that bought in 2000, 11 12 all the way to like even two years ago yeah. i mean there's equity still in those homes mm -hmm. uh just anybody who's bought during that time probably has money to be able to put down on a bigger home and the payment won't be as drastic as they think they just don't know it's your job to entice them with that yeah you gotta educate that's basically what i do guys it's pretty straightforward nothing nothing fancy straight to the point and move on to next appointment Let's get some listings, right? Go over All listings. Right. I mean, change your, change your strategy. Start yeah. targeting people. Target people who you think you can help. Making, making that move. Put a balance. Yeah, if you go back to all your social media feeds, most of them are buyer, 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 right? So it's like, change that approach and, and see what will happen. Yeah. Speak it into the universe. Breathe it in, right? All right. We're good? Any last Thank minute? Thanks. That's it. Go get it. Thank all right, Welcome. let's give him a round of applause. Right. Thank you, Ruben. And that concludes our episode of The Main Focus with Ruben Luna to get that listing. Thank you, and uh, we'll talk soon. Bye now.